Hello and welcome. It's so nice to see all of you again. Thank you so much for joining me and spending a few moments with me in the beginning of this new year. This is really a special year for me, even though every year really is kind of special. 82 years ago, I came into this world kicking and screaming, and my grandmother told my parents just to put me in a drawer because a drawer would do just fine. They didn't need a bassinet. Well, <laughs> that's how I began my life, in a drawer of all the things. Like all mothers, my children bring me so much joy. It's always wonderful to see each of them living their dream and enjoying the life that they have chosen. Hello and welcome again. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me today. Whether you know it or not, this is a very special week for me. This is my birthday week. I am going to be in a couple of days, 82. I can't believe that I've made it this far, you know, but my birthday is really doesn't seem much because my husband is 94 and golly, I'd like to be able to get to 94, you know, if I'm lucky. When I'm thinking about my birthday and thinking about my life and all the years that, that I have been blessed to be able to be on this earth, I think about sometimes about my past a little bit, about things that have happened to me in my life. I mean, you probably do that too, especially during this downtime that we've had so much with COVID, we've had more time to sit and think. Well, the other day I thought, you know, by golly, I'm going to clean out my closet. Well, it's not going to happen. It probably never will happen because I've got things in there that I love and I just can't really part with it. Anyway, in my closet, I also have stored some things that really mean something to me, memories that I brought with me from my other house. So naturally, I got sidetracked in cleaning out my closet, and I started looking at some of these things. Today, I really am going to share with you some of the life lessons that I've learned throughout the years that may help you to lead a better life and maybe you can share some of these with your children and your grandchildren to help them get a good start in life. But I'm going to show you and I just had opened one packet so I looked at this and I thought you know what this these things in this little packet kind of symbolizes my life and what has happened to me throughout my life. If you don't mind today, I really would like to share them with you. The first one is from 1947. I went to a school out in the country, and believe it or not, it was a one-room schoolhouse. I don't think that there are one-room schoolhouses anymore today. At least that's what I, you know, don't. Anyway, I think it was first uh, first grade to maybe the fourth grade, I, I really can't remember. But we had a spelling bee. And believe it or not, I won the spelling bee. I was so excited. And my gift for that spelling bee were these two books. They're bird books. And this is the original little tie that came with them. And uh, it tells me that, you know, that my name and that I won the spelling bee for the second grade. Well, it was just after the war. My parents really didn't have a lot of money. They had moved from Washington to Ohio. And at the time we were living with my grandparents with a lot of my other cousins because everybody was kind of down and out right after the war. When I got this book, it was such a treasured momentum to me that do you know that I never opened it? Never. I have carried these books around with me ever since 1947, and I have never, ever opened them. 
now that I think about it, what a pity. But it was just such a wonderful gift to me because I was at that time a poor little girl out in Nowhereville in Ohio. So this was just such a precious gift. I didn't want to disturb the bow, and I didn't want to disturb any of this. I have decided, since I'm going to be 82, that this is the year I'm going to open these books and I'm going to read them. And then I'm going to pass them on to my grandchildren. But it's sad, isn't it, that this would have brought me joy, probably reading these books and looking at them and cherishing them, but I was just so afraid to disturb what was inside. So that's where my head was when I was in the second grade. All right, let's fast, fast forward to voila, high school. <laughs> this is, oh, I'm sorry, upside down. This is my high school graduation. And this is 1957. And in this is listed the fact that I won the N. Edward Worstall Memorial Award for Journalism. I was editor of my school newspaper. I was really a nerd. I wasn't popular at all. As a matter of fact, I only had a boyfriend when I was a senior in high school, and I was the girl who decorated the prom and then went home because I didn't have a date. And in those days, the girls couldn't ask the boys. But in my senior year, I finally had a boyfriend, and I got to go to my senior prom. So this is from 1957, and I think my mother kept all these things for me when I was moving around and when... Uh, she downsized. We went through these, and these are things that she had kept from me. So this is my 1950. And you want to know what I looked like in 1957? <laughs> Prepare yourself. I had, you know, curly hair, really, really curly, thick hair. I didn't know what to do with it. So I spent my whole life, and thank you, Sandra D, for making the ponytail popular because this was me, one of my graduation pictures. And look at my hair. You know, I, I had real short bangs that were so short that when they curled up, they kind of disappeared into my head. I think I do have a photo of me with my hair down, but it was just like a, like now, a big crazy mop on top of my head. But look at that. Remember the sweaters and the sweater sets and the pearl chokers? That was the fashion of the day, and this was 1957. So there I was in 1957 graduating. Memories are flying by quite fast. All right, let's jump to uh, when I went to college, and I then went to New York City. It was my dream of my life to be able to go to New York City. I remember when I was in Ohio, I would lie across my bed and listen to William B. Williams at night because the signal came in really strong. And I would dream about living in New York and being this great actress and all that. So when I did finally get to New York, this was my first play. And this um, was Rip Torn and Geraldine uh, Page. They were married in Sweet Bird of Youth. So this was the, I was so excited. And then, you know, you dressed up when you went to the play. I think I went to a matinee and, um, you know, I was dressed nicely, I think in a, probably a suit or something like that. But when I watched this, you know, my heart began to beat and I thought, you know, that's where I belong. That's really where I belong. I belong up on that stage that I dreamed about ever since I was a little girl. And lo and behold, my life took a lot of twists and turns, ups and downs. But when I was 50 years old, I was playing lead roles off on Broadway and off Broadway. And I had all my union cards sag after equity. So never give up on your dream. You're never too old. Trust me because I can tell you that that's absolutely true. Now, we're going to fast forward to mamahood. I had children, and I found this in that little packet, and I don't know why I, nothing from my daughters happened to be in there. But do you know what I did to digress? <laughs> when I downsized, I went through all of my photographs, and everything that pertained to each child, and I have three children, I put all of those photographs together in different, and I sent them all the photographs that would mean something to them of their childhood. So actually here, I don't have that many 
photographs of when my children are young because I gave them all away to them. I thought they would probably enjoy them and their children would enjoy looking at them. This is a wonderful birthday card that I got from my youngest son to mom on your day. And um, inside he wrote a beautiful poem. So that's my rock star son who writes beautiful lyrics today for a living. And he was starting really early. He must have been uh, maybe about eight years old. And here is a picture of a rocket there. I don't know what he's sending me to the moon or what he's doing, but on the back, remember Pac-Man? Uh, he, I think he got a comp, what was it called? A, a uh, not a compact computer, but there was a name that started with a C. But he, he um, got a little computer, and he used to watch Pac-Man on that computer. So Pac-Man was on his mind probably more than his mother. But anyway, I thought that was sweet, and I'd forgotten all about that. All right, we're moving forward in my life. You know, I've got 82 years, so I've got a lot to go. To go. I've had a lot of ups and downs, uh, hills and valleys, just like you. You know, really good days, bad days things that I thought I would never survive, but I did. And uh, finally, we're coming to, uh, in my days, you know, in the theater. And this is, I was maybe 45. I was doing a lot of promo shots there. That's my little rock star son. And here's this is. But anyway, this is what I looked like when I was 45 years old. Look at all of that hair, girl. Where did it go? Anyway. That was from that era. So I'm going to fast forward to my marriage. I got married to Arthur. Uh, of course, you know, I had a wonderful, beautiful home on the ocean that was mine, and it belonged to my, my husband and I, who passed away. Um, actually, he was killed, you know, and who had schizophrenia. But I was able to keep that house. And it had a beautiful deck on a cliff overlooking the ocean. And 14 miles in the distance, I could see New York City. Arthur and I were sitting out on our deck on September the 11th and we were having coffee and all of a sudden we noticed smoke coming from the Twin Towers and we couldn't believe it. My daughter called me. She says, Mother, a plane just went into the Twin Towers and we thought it was an accident, of course. And we kept watching and then all of a sudden we saw a an orange flash and the second plane actually went into the Twin Towers. Now, in our area where I lived, as I said, it was just 14 miles across the sea, a lot of our neighbors, a lot of the people in our community worked in Wall Street. And that day, within an instant, we lost a lot of young people, a lot of neighbors, and a lot of good people. It moved me so much while I was watching that that I ran in the house and I wrote an article and I faxed it to the Asbury Park Press, which was our Gannett newspaper, our main newspaper. And I kept the front page of the special issue of that particular day of infamy in our lives. I hope we never, ever see it again. I'm not going to read the article to you. It is on uh, my blog, Sandra Sandra's Heart. Dot net and I'll put it below and you can read what I wrote in there. That takes me up to 2011. And of course, a lot of other exciting things have happened to me since then. I've downsized. I've come here to South Beach. I've started my YouTube channel when I was 78 years old. It's never too late, ever. No matter what things you've gone through in your life, and how many times can I say it? You know, it's just never too late to live your dream and to start your life. Now, I'm going to tell you my things that I tell everyone, especially the young people in my life, uh, who ask me for advice. And I have an ask me theory. Ask me. And these five things, if you can remember, ask me and remember to tell your grandchildren, are things that I have learned in my life that are extremely important for you to lead a good life, a happy life, and to perhaps follow your heart and follow your dreams. 
Ask me. A. Ask and you shall receive. If you don't ask, you're not going to get it. Us humans cannot read minds. At least, I don't think so. At least the people I know. If you don't tell your husband, your children, your boss, the people that are around you, if you don't tell them what you need, how are they going to know? How are they going to know what you want? Ask your higher power. Ask God. If you don't ask him, how will he know what your heart wants and what you really desire? And that really is important. Don't be afraid to ask for your wants and your needs. S. Surround yourself with like people and like minds. Surround yourself with people that believe in you and will give you a leg up and a pat on the back and cheer you on. Surrounding yourself with positive people in your life is so, so important. Negative people only pull at your pant leg like a little pygmy and drag you down. K. Keep the joy of living forever. No matter how young or old you are, keep the joy of living. Keep learning. Keep searching for knowledge. Keep trying to improve everything in your life. Don't ever lose that excitement for life because keeping that will not make you go backwards but will always open up curiosity and keep you more excited about the next day and the next thing coming. So that is A-S-K. Now let's get to me. M. Every day. Make sure you give back in some way. It doesn't have to be something really big. If you can give back in a big way, that's absolutely wonderful. But give back by even giving a smile to the person who is packing your groceries for you. A smile to that person who has opened the door for you. A smile to that person you passing the street who, 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 you, who has looked at you. Give back in every single way you can every single day. Whether it's just a tiny small gesture or whether it's sharing your talents with someone that will help them improve their lives, don't forget, make sure that you share each and every day something with someone because that is the way that you can give back. And the last one I've talked about before, and it really is important because so many of us don't do this, Embrace your imperfections. None of us are perfect. We don't have perfect lives. We're not perfect people. Embrace your imperfections so you don't like your nose, you don't like your curly hair, your wild and crazy hair. Maybe you don't like your lips or, or you're too tall or you're way too much. Whatever it is, embrace who you are right now. Everyone else is taken. You can't be someone else. You can't be Nicole Kidman or, or, or someone else. You can't be Taylor Swift, you know, with her voice and her millions of dollars. You cannot be that person because she is already taken. Embrace who you are. Embrace your, your imperfections and appreciate where you are right today. Don't try to be someone you are not, because sure as I am 82, if you do that, you're not going to be happy. You're going to have low self-esteem, and you'll never feel fulfilled in your life. Coming from me on my birthday week, ask me, is a good way to remember all of these things when you tell your grandchildren or when you look in the mirror and tell yourself, I am going to try to lead a purposeful life. I'm going to embrace who I am. 
I am going to ask for what I need and surround myself with wonderful people. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate each and every one of you who has come to spend my birthday week with me and um, bless you all. And I can't wait to see you in my next video. Thank you.